Welcome back to Water Cooler Wednesdays, brought to you by my EAP. This week, we'll be talking about how we can positively adjust to the transition of going back to work. While working from home, we might have gotten used to having our family around, and by having them around, we knew that they were safe. Moving back to the office, we might experience a little bit of anxiety, worry, and increased feelings of stress. To manage this, we can bring our home to the office simply by decorating our desks with pictures or mementos of our loved ones. This can allow us to still feel connected to our loved ones even though they may not be in the same physical space as us. To aid with the transition, we can start by taking small steps such as setting our alarm clock earlier, to factor in commute time, making breakfast, even getting the kids back into a routine of waking up early. All of these things can help smooth that transition into a new version of normal. Just like when we were getting used to working from home, transitioning back to the office may come with its difficulties. And that's okay. To combat that, we've got to communicate with those around us if we're having any difficulties as that will help to foster trust among colleagues and to prevent misunderstandings. It's also going to be an adjustment getting our work-life balance in a gear, especially when we haven't seen our colleagues in so long and we may want to catch up. Here is where setting healthy boundaries come into place. We've got to find that balance between staying connected, especially to our colleagues in the office, making sure that we're all getting adjusted healthily, but also staying up to date with our work and our deadlines. We might also experience some feelings of financial anxiety. To reduce this, we've got to re-examine our budget, noting the areas where we might see fluctuations. By keeping a track of our current spending, we can regain a sense of control over the uncertainty or unpredictability over the current economic climate. When re-examining our finances, we've also got to work together to be on the same page with the members of our household, noting where we have to cut back on our wants as we work towards meeting our needs such as traveling, gas, tuition. Also importantly, as we adjust our budgets, we may need to take into consideration where we've got to allocate funds to resume regular payment of things such as our mortgage or our credit cards. These steps help us to be prepared as we transition to this new vision of normal. We've also got to continue to take care of ourselves. That is, examine the ways in which our bodies might be telling us we're feeling overwhelmed and anxious, whether it is increased headaches or increased muscle tension. This is the time to note where we may have to adjust our self-care practices, reaching out for support if needed. Remember, self-care is defined as any activity that we deliberately engage in to reduce stress, anxiety, and to support our mental health. Anxiety is a survival mechanism, and often it will look for confirmation for any of its suspicions. Our brain usually goes to that worst case scenario. Therefore, to aid in reducing feelings of anxiety, we can note all the ways in which our work environment supports us staying safe, as well as the practices we're currently doing to reduce our risk of becoming sick. As we make this adjustment, we once more emphasize being patient and kind with ourselves. It is going to take a little bit of time to get adjusted, and that's okay. We've got to take it one step at a time and celebrate it when things go right. Remember that you can always reach out if you need that extra support. My EAP is here for you. Contact us via email at eap at familiesinaction.net or give us a call at 628 2333 or via your in-country helpline.